Welcome to the bold analysis. The Deputy President Rigadi Geshagwa has been spending time in Mount Kenya for the last four days since Friday using all sorts of proverbs to describe what he sees as new Ruto's political move with Ray Lodinga. And his message is clear. He's telling the mountainers that those young leaders being used to divide the mountain will regret. And according to him, they should actually coalesce around him as the deputy president. And I think since that Raila Odinga met with William Ruto, the dominant narrative has been a question of where does this put Rigadi Geshagwa, a man who had spent the last 15 months of Kenya Kwanzaa assaulting and fishing for every word and to demean Raila Odinga. Today, in State House, there was a very crucial event. And this is the event where the president assented to law the county government's additional funding allocation bill in State House, where 45 billion was actually disbursed to counties. This event happened in State House. And I want you to look at this video that is now running in this screen. You can see that every government officer, high ranking, were actually was actually in State House. So you can see the Dep you can see the President Ruto, Prime Cabinet Sub Secretary Musalim Devadi. You can see Majority Leader, that is uh, um, Majority Leader Kimani Chungwa. You can see Ndindi Nyoro, a representative from the Treasury, that is Kipro, and uh, Waziri Njungunandung was also not, was not in State House. The leadership of both the Houses, both the Senate and the National Assembly, Moses Masika Wetangula, and I think even the State House um, um, uh, photographers, videographers, were so keen on showing us who and who was in State House. One gentleman, the Deputy President Tigeti Geshagwa, for the first time was absent in an event where the President is ascending a bill into a law. So, it is not just a mere coincidence. It is coming at a time when there is really a lot of debate about their relationship. And I followed through that event and the speeches. Even there is the chair, um, COG, of Governors, Anway Guru. The only person missing in that video and who is supposed to be there, and I want to tell you why he has to be there, is one Deputy President, Rigadi Geshagwa. You may not want, I know you might take a casual, a pedestrian look and ask me, Kevin, must all of them be there? Yes. And why this is very important. This bill is touching on county governments, a devolution. All, well, all the government, um, uh, all the government officers um, uh, were there. The guy that was meeting was missing, but... Apart from just him being a deputy president, he chairs the IBEC. IBEC is one of the intergovernmental bodies uh, that is coordinating between the national government and the county governors. So the deputy president is the chair of IBEC. And part of this bill on this uh, money that has been disbursed to counties, the person that has been spearheading those talks is actually deputy president Rigadi Geshagwa. So if you follow through, you will realize there are quite sessions where they met with Rigadi, they, they tried to break the stalemate, they could not, they went to the National Assembly. So there has been a back and forth between the governors and the Deputy President Rigadi Geshagwa. That is number one where Rigadi's significance there is very important. Number two, devolution falls under his docket. Devolution is under the docket of the Deputy President Rigadi Geshagwa. So I want to tell you, apart, those are some of the reasons on matters devolution. But better still, can I remind you that it is a Kenya Kwanzaa tradition. Since William Ruto came to power, whenever there is such an event, Rigadi Gashagwa has been attending, has been there in person. And this was 
when I think there some other bill, I think that was the finance bill was being sent to law. He's been in state house. He's been attending. And um, it was an event because you could even see the president, William Bruto, made a speech in state house. Um, the Council of Governors for working with us and the National Assembly and the Senate to make it possible for us to agree on moving these bills forward. Um, the decision by the Council of Governors to withdraw uh, court matters that had become a stumbling block on this issue is a very welcome development and it goes to the spirit of both levels of government working together and both levels of government working also with the legislature so that we can find mechanisms of us working together without the acrimony that comes with taking ourselves to court. It is um, our collective decision to find ways of working together harmoniously, finding consensus on matters that are difficult and listening to one another. Secondly, I'm very happy that uh, now we have resources that will support our counties close to 29 billion shillings will be made available by this uh, piece of legislation that has now become law. It will support our counties to discharge their mandate, which is very clear in our constitution. And because the counties are doing, uh, are carrying out mandate assigned to them by the constitution, and it is our responsibility to mobilize resources and support the counties. I must say that um, we continuously are working towards making sure that whenever we have resources, it is shared between the two levels of government equitably so that every level of government can discharge their responsibilities. I know last week we paid, uh, is it last week or the week before? The week before, we paid about 31 billion shillings to our counties. So ladies and gentlemen, there is a question that I've tried to ask a journalist. And as he has just posed a question to me that I want to ask you. Who do you think convened, who do you think sent the invite for the meeting? It is the State House team. It is not William Ruto. It was not, even if it was, it was sent through, maybe it was, if it is a joint WhatsApp group, then all of, my, all of them are in that WhatsApp group. And if it is not, this is an official communication. And could it be that Regadi Geshagwa was not, the invite was not sent to Regadi Geshagwa? No. If that would be the case, then any person there would have told Regadi that we are going to state house, we are going to do this and that. So is it a possibility that State House failed to invite Regadi Geshagwa in that event? <laughs> we will maybe in the course of the week, we will ascertain that. But that is also one of the possibilities. The possibility number two, did Regadi Geshagwa know and just disappeared from that meeting? We will find out. And to help us find out, huh, I went to looking at his Monday diary. Monday diary the deputy president is here in Laikipia. And in Laikipia, he is launching a Huduma Center in Laikipia County, accompanied by a Nyeri governor, the host governor for Laikipia, and other Mount Kenya leaders. And if you sample the messaging there, there is a, a, a quote in the law, I like using it here, say, Jericho Ringo Maungenga Malawi, to mean, Someone who amefanya, mutabe amefanya makosa, that person will always run even if no one is running after him. You will always be on the run even if someone, even if no one is chasing him. Now that is what, that is best describes the speeches because apparently the speeches in Laikipia are talking about we will support William Ruto, are talking about something on 
relationship between William Ruto and Rigathi Gachagua? Ningetaka niseme tu kitu kimoja. Na ninaposema hivi ni kwamba sisi tunakupenda kama naibu rais wetu na mtoto wa sehemu hii ya mlima na Nyeri kabisa. Na sisi tungetaka tutangaze hadharani kila mtu akisikia kwamba tuko nyuma ya daktari William Samoei Ruto tukiongozwa na wewe. Na wewe ambaye tungetaka Mungu akitusaidia kwenda mbele mambo vile yatakuwa hayatawezekana kama hatuta support da, daktari William Samoei Ruto. Na kwa hivyo tukisimama hapa tanikiongea kwa niaba ya watu wa Nyeri. Sisi tumesimama imara tuko nyuma ya serikali yenu na hakuna mgawanyiko ulioko katikati ya serikali atikuwe na serikali mbili au moja yote ni moja na iko chini ya daktari William Samoei na nguo kana tikuo haya toke madhura ndo adhura toa magayo kanagia e utonda iwa mbuge wa nyualia na no yaka kukiaria tukiuge todo anaruona anekatea anekatea nyoba nini echira gali Nyoba nini echira gake kogito echira gake mwashimua mwagi waki ojule ni vizuri tuseme hivi wakati sisi watu wa mlima tunasema tunataka kuongea na tuko pamoja sio sisi tunafanya mambo tofauti na wale wako western wanda kujuzi niliona mudavadi ya mekaa na watu wao wanaongea haikuwa na shida ama kulikuwa na shida tukaenda nyanza wanaongea hata ngeno wako hapa atakwambia rift valley wakiongea wanaongea isiwe tu kwamba western wakiongea ni sawa nyanza wakiongea ni sawa rift valley wakiongea ni sawa Mlima ikiongea hapo ndiyo shida iko. Iko shida gani mlima hata sisi tukiongea? Kwa maelekeo tu ukiaja. Na sisi tukiongea ajenda yetu ni mo. Na ajenda ni kusupport daktari William Samoei. Na watu tukikenyi tena twaberia kwaaja. Lazima watu wana unajua sisi ni kwa nini tunaogopewa hivi 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 tu. Sisi hatuongei mambo mengi tunasema tu vile Yesu anarudi tunasema na tuna tutaokoka alafu tena tunasema serikali ni ya William Samoei Ruto wakiwa na regade kwa hivyo tukisema hata tukiitana juzi tuli kuna mtu aliyanaitwa Chinua Achembe alisema hivi akasema ukiona mwenye kijiji ameita wana kijiji waje kwake wa kule pamoja si hawakuja kuangalia mwezi ama hawakuja kwa sababu kwa hakuna chakula kwa hivyo watu ya Gobet ni sema asante sana na vile tumesema umoja wa hii jamii yetu ya Mount Kenya ni muhimu na viongozi wote wamesema wazi labda mwangi kujuri huku sikia vile waliongea walisema the mountain should be united behind president William Ruto kwa hivyo there is no contradiction or conflict sisi tunasema ya kwamba Rais alichaguliwa na hii watu ya mlima 87%. Tunataka kutafuta ile 13% ambayo ilikuwa nje tuilete iunge rais wetu mkono. But we cannot do that when we divide the community. Na dio kulipokuwa na maongeo hapo mbeleni dio ilifanya hii debate ya umoja wa mlima ianze ya kusema tukawe watu ya Kiambu, watu ya Nyeri, watu ya Moranga, tukaona tutapotea kama jamii. Sisi tunataka tuunganisha watu wetu wote behind president William Ruto and also cement our relevance in the national political discourse todo hinyawito ne urumweke wito and we know as a region honorable mwangi kujure you know how this region has suffered when we were divided in the year 1992 you can remember one group Nyeri, Laikipia, Nyandarwa, parts of Nakuru, Kirinyaga, Meru, Nembu, Tharaka Nithi. We went with President Mwai Kibaki. Another group of Muranga, Kiambu, part of Nairobi went with Kenneth Matiba and we walked in the opposition. The same happened in 1997. But from 2002, this region learned its lessons and decided to be speaking in one voice so that they can remain in government at all times and since this region found the formula 
of being in government and being relevant, we have remained in government to date. In 2002, 2007, 2013, 2017, 2022, we behaved in a clever manner by casting our vote as a region in total. And that is what has given us an opportunity to either lead government or to be part of government. And that is what we want to continue. And we must make sure that this region remains in government forever in eternity. And that's why I've said, as a leader in this region, it is also my responsibility to make sure this region remains united and remains in government today, tomorrow, the day after, and years to come. And that is why the call for unity behind President William Ruto and our own unity as a region is important. And that we shall continue telling our people, because it's important that we remind our people the challenges we had. From these speeches, you can see the voices of discontent. And there is a likelihood that when Regadi was in Ikepia, he realized, the social media team realized, that there is a very critical event going on in State House and maybe he's not been invited. And probably this is part of the thing going on and just waiting to see how probably he's going to react. And even to just, you know, more curiously, Huduma Center, the opening of Huduma Center, is that, does that fall on the office of the deputy president? No. That falls under Aisha Jumwa. And Aisha Jumwa is not attending the Laikipia event. In fact, those attending that event is the governor the, and, and a host of MPs there running some politics. And they have pitched tent to launch a Huduma Center. Well, the CS in charge of Huduma Center, Aisha Jumwa, is not there. Honestly speaking, something is not adding up. In fact, Aisha Jumwa is in Vihiga. Yes. This what you are seeing here is of Aisha Jumwa in Vihiga. While the deputy president is launching a Huduma Center in Laikipia, and William Ruto is in State House ascending to Bill in an event that every government official is attending. Answer me. I may not have the answer, but give me an answer. How special is launching of Huduma Center in Laikipia that can make the deputy president to skip the State House event? The State House event has lasted for 30 minutes, where the deputy president has a, 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 pub, a, 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 a chopper funded by taxpayers' money. He can attend this after 30 minutes, then fly to Laikipia. So Laikipia cannot be, the launching of Uduma Center in Laikipia cannot be an excuse of failing to attend the president's event. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what you are seeing, but from where I am seated, there is something. And more likely, the Gabi Gashagwa, there are two things. Maybe he was invited, decided not to, for his own reasons or number two he did not get the invite but i don't think he can be invited and will fail to go for something who regarding gashago worships william ruto he worships william ruto he is is a yes sir person so he would actually go now i want to look at this and say what do you think is the real nightmare Rigadi Gashago is facing while working with William Ruto. Now, there is, there is that nightmare he's facing. Before you look at that, I want to humbly request you to subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell, and like our video. There are some four nightmares that Rigadi Gashago is having on this new, on the new political development trajectory William Ruto is taking. Number one, Ruto engaged Raila but there seems not to be full disclosure apart from what is being reported in media. There seems to be not full disclosure and perhaps William Ruto and Regal and, 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 and Rayla decided we are not going to explain that. You know, 
it is only us in media that reported and and according to what Raila Odinga shared and what William Ruto shared it is only us that reported that they met to seal two deals one Uganda to support Raila Odinga's African Union chairman ch ch chairmanship bid and number two the Uganda Kenya oil deal it's only those two that have been reported and regarding the shaga could be seen that there is more than what catches the eye and maybe he's also in the same position just what william ruto said in facebook page is what he has failed maybe to call regadi or maybe regadi the shaga was expecting that after uganda they will sit down with the president they will understand they will talk and understand what exactly is the nitty gritties of the deal between Raila Odinga and William Ruto and William Ruto has failed to give that full disclosure and what has happened now leaders are now uh, talking with emotions that those will be those from will say we support Raila Odinga those others will say we don't want the I saw the Ayala team saying we are pushing for Raila to give a speech in the East African Assembly legislative assembly to to, to market his bid so but I think Regarding Shagwa's biggest problem, Ruto is not telling him what exactly was said, apart from the AUC bid, AUC bid and the oil deal. Was there a political deal between Raila Odinga and William Ruto? And did the intelligence sanction that meeting that at the end of the day, they need to come together? So there's something happening and that is regarding Shagwa's devil number one. There is no full disclosure of what exactly is happening. And Rigadi is in the dark. In fact, he's just throwing tantrums to try to know what exactly is going on. Number two, with emerging alliance of Gideon Moy and the um, uh, Kalonzo Musyoka coming on Uhuru Axis, Uhuru is coming back to Mount Kenya. And his attempt to have a truce, a political truce with Uhuru Kenyatta has failed. Remember that was his script number one. Regarding Kashagwa's script one was to ensure, because these young leaders according to him were aimless, were directionless and they were just being used to divide the mountain. In his bid allegedly to unite his mountain and talk to, that he was talking about, he wanted a political truce with Uhuru Kenyatta. But Uhuru Kenyatta has emerged very slippery and is not picking up that call. Now that has left him just trying to consolidate now and now he's talking more about Mount Kenya coalescing around him. But in real sense, the biggest problem is also that he's not getting, Uhuru Kenyatta is not buying his story on that handshake. Number three. Um, there seems to be some state lifting on Dindi Nyoro. Because um, Ndindi Nyoro toured Raila's backyard on Sunday. Just amidst this discussion, Ndindi Nyoro has been going to Rift Valley, was being received by the Rift Valley MPs who are not so much receptive of the Deputy President Rigadi Geshagwa. And these MPs, these young MPs, seems to be having a soft spot and coalescing around Ndindi Nyoro. The Deputy President Rigadi Gashago, who has been in government, understands very well that that political network, for you to mobilize and have, for these leaders to have a soft spot, there must be a blessings from a higher office. And so what the Deputy President fails to understand is, is William Ruto grooming Dindi Nyoro to take over as the running mate in 2027? You know? Or has, has William Ruta agreed that what we want to do, all Kenya Kwanzaa MPs will choose, or maybe MPs will choose the running mate? Is that, and, and so Rigedi is not really clear on what exactly is the deal on table. Because things are happening. You can see Ndindi Nyoro in Kisumu, you see Ndindi Nyoro was in Nyakach, Ndindi Nyoro was in Bondo, Ndindi Nyoro was in Baringo, he was in West Pokot, he was in Wasingishi, welcomed by uh, Oscar Sudi. Oscar Sudi is William Ruto's right hand person. So the mixed signals are pointing out to something coming up. Number three, 
with Ruto having a soft spot for Raila Odinga, their political weapon, they have been disarmed. They are feeling like now, what else are we going to tell our people? Because do you feel like you want to attack Kalonzo on what line? What has it done? What is it all about? So the Rigadi have found the Rigadis have found themselves in a very difficult place. Because what they intend, you know what normally happens is leaders just echo what the big man is saying. When Ruto wake up today and say, I changed my position, Raila is not the best fit for that job, the whole Kenya Kwanzaa team will follow that suit. And all these people you're seeing praising Raila Dinga will come up and return and start saying, This is not going to be it. So with William Ruto taking a retreat on you know, attacking Raila and all that, the guy has been found into another place like, what do we say? And again, what seems not to be working is Rigadi believed that what Ruto said that he needed Raila to be out of the picture was something that was going to be very possible. So how about a man we said we are taking to Bondo is now the person we are supporting to go to the African Union? How is Addis Ababa now becoming the new bondo? Now this explanation, and I think it's coming out clearly, that things are thick. On this one, tell me, why do you think Rigadi skipped the State House event? Thank you.